Your face, you're practically hollow. But who knows? Going hollow could solve quite a bit. <laughs> Hi everyone, and welcome back once again to Thursdev. I am Luke, and I'd like to invite you to join me on a quick jaunt today back to Lordran, because today I'd like to talk a little bit more about Dark Souls. I've had some very interesting conversations lately about Dark Souls and difficult games in general, both in the office and on the internet, so perhaps that sort of kindled the bonfire of my imagination for this one. Or maybe it's just because one of my coworkers has a screenshot of Lothric as his Windows wallpaper, but Dark Souls has gotten into my head again. I've been thinking a lot about Dark Souls and its mechanics and what makes it a successful series, and because of that, I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube about Dark Souls recently. The whole debate about difficulty has sort of been done, and I think I made my general position reasonably clear on it in a recent Serious Sunday about brutal games, but there's another very interesting lesson that I think Dark Souls can teach us as game developers through something that I consider a very risky gamble that they took that ultimately paid off in a big way. If you're familiar with Demon Souls, Dark Souls, or even Bloodborne, you're probably at least passingly familiar with how the gameplay itself is generally non-expository. Really, aside from a few conversations with NPCs, you get to know very little about the world around you. What you will know really from playing the game without making a vested effort to dive in is that there's a bunch of big scary guys from a time before time, some people are undead and the undead can go insane so are locked away for theirs and everyone else is good. You meet a lot of people throughout the game who will tell you things that may help you achieve your goals, like a knight that gives you your Estus Flask telling you that if you escape, you should seek out and ring the bells of awakening during your pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. No real context is given aside from that's his quest, and by doing so you'd know the fate of the undead. The same Bells of Awakening are also spoken of by the crestfallen warrior that you meet upon arriving at Lordran, telling you that there are two, one up in the cathedral below which he sits, and one deep below at the base of Blight Town. Really, this is the plot of the game. Travel through the undead burg, up around the castle and ring the first bell, then go down to Blight Town and ring the second bell. Doing this will consequentially allow you to meet King Seeker Frampt, who will then name you the Chosen One and tell you to go get something called the Lord Vessel. Then you go fight a handful of mini-bosses before battling the Lord of Cinder and Ye Plot. The thing is, if you were a casual player, well, if you were a truly casual player, you most likely wouldn't get through Blight Town to fight Quelag due to the aforementioned difficulty curve that Dark Souls is so famous for. But if you were a recently skilled player, only casually playing through Dark Souls and not digging much deeper than the surface, this would be about as far as you would get, plot-wise. MacGuffin after MacGuffin that ultimately leads you to an epic battle against an ancient foe because you're the chosen one, with a decision to make that leads you to your happy or not so happy ending. Dark Souls style, so kind of empty, depressing, and cryptic either way. On its surface, Dark Souls makes very little effort to present any of its story or its lore to the player. It does the polar opposite of what many of Japan's RPGs do, in that it avoids basically any exposition aside from that which you get during the opening sequence and once again at the end of the Undead Asylum. But Dark Souls is renowned for having some of the most compelling and sought-after lore of many of its contemporary peers. Despite games like Final Fantasy XIII clubbing you over the head repeatedly with long sections of dialogue punctuating by exciting cinematic spectacle, Dark Souls is content to just kind of leave subtle hints about its story everywhere and let only the observant soak it in. And good gravy do they soak it in. The super fans of the Souls series can often recite detailed histories of characters and places that you barely even interact with during the course of the game, from clues hinted at and snippets in the flavor text of gear that you find scattered around the game, and presented as passing mentions in the dialogue of characters that you meet. The game abounds with tragic stories of people thrust into an unforgiving land, clawing desperately at something to hold on to that will allow them to retain their humanity, and one by one losing sight of it and eventually falling into madness, as the game refers it, becoming hollow. 
Be it from a wish of self-betterment in the case of Laurentius or Siegmeier's feelings of inadequacy spurred on by being constantly helped by someone far more skilled than him. The deeper you dig, the more you uncover, but almost none of these stories are even witnessed directly by the player. Nearly the entire plot of the game is told through this style of non-invasive, implied plot. And often, the motivations or the rhyme or reason of any of these things are not readily apparent without a fair bit of inference and observation. It's not even only inside the clues in the landscape and dialogue of the characters itself, but much of the game's lore is hidden in what is commonly known as flavor text, of items and equipment that the player gains through their playthroughs. Text that most players will never even bother to give a first thought to, let alone a second. For this reason, I consider Miyazaki-san at From Software and the entire design team therein to have taken a very big risk in presenting their story this way. A calculated one, no doubt, but a risk nonetheless. Dark Souls, like its predecessor Demon Souls on the surface, presents very little to the non-alert observer, and at first glance it appears to be little more than a gritty medieval fantasy action RPG that promises to kill you early and kill you often, and it shouldered a very real possibility that it would be seen as only that. Granted, it drops many hints of other far grander things from very early on, but they're easily overlooked as it's mostly just very subtle foreshadowing. Thankfully, the game's mechanics were much lauded by critics, but it was evident that plot digging was not a priority, and why would it be, especially for game critics? They only have so much time to play these games. In the rare cases that the story was even touched upon at release, the consensus was that it was, generally speaking, unimportant and not what you played the game for in the first place. One of its most glowing reviews from metro.co.uk had the following to say of the plot. Although Dark Souls is an excellent storyteller, its plot is of little importance. The backstory is standard fantasy fare, but it's kept in the background enough that you're able to imagine your own details. The specifics of what's going on might not be interesting, but the melancholic mood the game generates is fantastically well maintained, not through the amateurish voiceovers, but the brooding, hopeless atmosphere of the game world itself. And by no means were they wrong, by merit of the experience they no doubt had with the game. But one of the most enduring parts of the game, if the community is to be believed, is the depth and breadth of its storytelling. And if Dark Souls hadn't been something of a breath of fresh air in a time when most gamers were desperately looking for something challenging to sink their teeth into, it's very possible it would have been overlooked completely, or at worst relegated to the same box as, for example, the Ninja Gaiden reboots, renowned for their difficulty and little else. Fortunately for From Software, the fans are hungry for knowledge, and this powerful underlying beast of a game was exposed for many to experience, and given a widespread voice thanks to YouTube channels like Silvermont and Vatividya. So obviously Dark Souls did something right. Honestly, I believe that the way that the story was obfuscated may well have been part of the allure that sucked so many fans in. If we were introduced to Siegmeier and forced to follow him throughout the game accomplishing tasks for him when he got stumped, or to follow Solaire of Astora around Lordran helping him to find his own personal son, it may have been a far less rewarding experience. As a matter of fact, this method of storytelling even plays to one of Hidetaka Miyazaki's core pillars of the Dark Soul experience, a sense of achievement, Taseikan. The main way they attempted to allow the player to feel this sense of achievement, of course, is to throw the player against difficult situations that they would then have to overcome. But it may be no coincidence that the community surrounding the game is constantly feeling more and more achieved by unraveling this tangled web that the people at From Software have weaved. But what can we as designers take home from this? Obviously, just to say that From Software is doing a good job and patting them on the back has merit as well, but not very much. We ourselves should perhaps look at this more non-invasive way of giving the players an experience that transcends direct exposition that most games give us as something to explore. There will, of course, always be a time and place for it, but perhaps we can engage players more sometimes by letting them fill in a few of the blanks themselves and only leading them with an enticing trail of breadcrumbs. 
whether it be the Chiliad mystery in Grand Theft Auto V, the vault experiments of the Fallout universe, or any number of the myriad of untold plots within the world of Dark Souls. This subtlety is enticing, compelling. People love to be part of a mystery, even as an observer. And that's it for me today. Thank you for being part of my show, which is in no way subtle in the way it tells its story, but I hope that you'd enjoyed it. And I hope that I'll see you next time as well. Thanks very much. Take care.